Hello everyone, this is Dr. Patil here. So I'm going to take you through excretory system in human beings. Uh, so this uh, little video will involve talking about the basic structure, structural unit of the human kidneys. And in the end, I'll talk about artificial kidney that is hemodialysis. This is targeted to year 10 CBSC. Uh, students. So I'm not going to go into much details of human excretory system, just whatever uh, is there in your uh, CBSC book about this. Uh, so I'm going to take you through that. So basically, what is exc excretion? So excretion is the process. It's the life process. It is essential life process. That means one cannot live without excretion. What does excretion involve? The body generates various metabolites, metabolic end products and these metabolic end products are harmful to the body. They need to be removed from the body. So these waste products are removed from the body by a process called as excretion. So different organisms will have different ways of getting rid of this harmful waste products. Unicellular organisms will excrete by simple diffusion from inside to the outside. So this is a process of diffusion. But multicellular organisms will have more complex excretory system. And such as human being and they will have a specialist excretory that is urinary system. Now let us talk about human excretory system. So excretory system of human beings consists of two kidneys and the system to transport the urine from kidneys to the outside of the body. So that involves, as you can see here, two kidneys. They are located on either side of the spine, that is backbone. And so on the both sides, and they are called as paraspinally located uh, on both sides, so parallel to the spine. From kidneys, the urine is collected by ureters. So there is a pair of ureters, pair of kidneys, pair of ureters. The ureters transport urine from kidney to urinary bladder and the bladder is a storage organ. It consists of muscles and it's a muscular organ. Okay and when the bladder fills up it goes beyond the capacity then at that time the blood, there is a urge to pass the urine, that is, urge to micturate, urge to pee. And then when a suitable time is available, convenient time, place available, the human being can voluntarily pass the urine out of the body through urethra. So that's the urethra. Okay. So these are the basic anatomical structures of the human excretory system. So what does this human urinary system excretes? It excretes urea, uric acid. These are the nitrogenous waste products. It also excretes excess water, excess salts as well as glucose. And there are various other toxins that are excreted by the kidney. Now I'm going to take you through the basic structure of this system. So have a look at this diagram. So this is a section of the kidney. It's cut and so it, it is cut longitudinally and you can see the structure of the kidney here. The re branch, this is a renal artery, red color, entering the kidney and supplying the blood supply. And you can see the blood that is filtered from kidney is shown in a blue vessel. So that is a renal vein. 
and the urine that is collected that is created generated in the kidney is passed down through the ureter so that is that goes to the bladder and here is a structure of a basic unit functional unit of the kidney it is called as nephron so i'm going to talk more about this nephron so these renal arteries on each side one on each side they divide and redivide to give branch to the basic structure of the kidney that is nephron and that is a branch of renal artery you can see the blood entering here into this capsule like structure here i'll take you through this in the next uh, few minutes so now if you look at the basic structure of the uh, the unit functional unit of the kidney that is nephron so this is a network basically it is made up of a two components one is a blood vessel capillary network that is also called as glomerulus so what does it involve it involves the branch of renal artery a small artery that is called arteriole it brings the blood to the capillary network that is glomerulus this is a wide artery so the blood comes with high pressure and then it is drained via efferent so the the one which brings blood to the glomerulus is called afferent the the artery that takes the blood away from glomerulus is called efferent arteriole and the efferent arteriole is narrow so the blood here is under pressure because it comes from wide artery and it has to pass through the narrow artery so it is under pressure that pressure pushes the excess water into this end you know capsule like cup like end of this big tubule okay so this is a renal tubule nephron and the cup like structure here is called as bowman's capsule so the blood is filtered out under pressure is called filtration into the bowman's capsule now the efferent arteriole passes round rest of these tubules okay and there is also exchange between the blood into these arterioles vents and the part of the tubule it surrounds so there is exchange and this pro this process at the bowman's capsule is called filtration when excess blood is filtered there is a lot of water it is about 180 liters of filtrate generated in both kidneys every day but we don't pass that much water that much urine we only pass couple of liters the adult average adult will pass 2 liters around 2 liters of urine so rest of the urine produced here is reabsorbed into the branches of this arteriole the process is called reabsorption so what is filtered at bowman's capsule excess water glucose amino acid salts and water and what is reabsorbed so this whatever is whatever water is filtered excess water is filtered it is reabsorbed back into the blood vessels now this filtrate this material that is filtered into the renal tubules is uh, passed through the proximal convoluted tubule then through the distal convoluted tubule so if you look at this vessel so there is a bowman's capsule there is a proximal convoluted tubule there is a distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct and a narrow tube that is a loop u shaped loop that connects the proximal convoluted tubule with distal convoluted tubule is called loop of henle or henle's loop okay so the collecting duct receives this filtered uh, liquid from filtered fluid from the blood vessels and that filtered fluid is called as urine okay so this diagram explains it in more details it shows the blood vessels how the blood, uh, renal arterioles they branch 
afferent, efferent, then branching. They form a network around this proximal and distal convoluted tubule and loop of Henle. And then they collect the filtered blood that is pure blood that is after excretion of the nitrogenous waste, excess salt and water that is a pure blood goes as a uh, renal venule and then it goes they all collect to form the renal vein and renal vein then enters into the aorta so collecting duct carries the urine now what happens after collecting duct so i'll show you in the next slide next uh, pa page here diagram so now this is a very easy diagram to remember the blood comes with the waste products that is renal arteriole renal artery divides into different branches and then the blood which is filtered that is pure blood goes through the renal vein now here it shows the nephron it has got a bowman's capsule the capillary network that is glomerulus then blood that comes from the arteriole is filtered there is a filtration rest of the blood flows through the narrow uh, arteriole the the filtrate that is uh, secreted filtered into the bowman's capsule passes through the chain of tubules that is proximal convoluted loop of henle distal convoluted tubule and then into the collecting duct so that is uh, again self explanatory now let us have a look at more details of this bowman's capsule now this this is important structure okay you will learn about this in year 11 12 and if some of you go to medicine then you will be learning in more and more details so now look at this diagram carefully so there is an afferent arteriole then there is a network of capillaries and then narrow efferent arteriole so this network is called bowman's capsule now this expanded cup like you know cup like end of the nephron is uh, the Bowman's capsule and the network of the capillaries you know I have already explained you this is called glomerulus okay so glomerulus and this is Bowman's capsule and then whatever blood is filtered into the cavity of the Bowman's capsule it passes through the proximal convoluted tubule so these are more details uh, so the Bowman's capsule has got two layers parietal layer and visceral layer so parietal is outside visceral is inside the visceral layer has got special types of cells and that have got legs legs are also called as poda podo so they are called podocytes okay these are on the visceral layer and the parietal layer is thin so Bowman's capsule glomerulus and then space of the Bowman's capsule that is capsular space the neck and then proximal convoluted tubule so this whole structure is also called as Malpighian body okay so you may be asked this in your entrance exams this is this is not uh, in the CBSC syllabus but you should know that this whole structure is called Malpighian body and it has got glomerulus Bowman's capsule glomerulus has two layers the inner visceral and outer parietal layer and this whole, whole structure is called Malpighian body so now we have just seen how the blood is filtered and how it passes through a system of tubes and then the collecting ducts collect the blood now collecting ducts they all collect the blood and they pass it to the renal pelvis this this structure here is a hollow sac like structure in the uh, on the medial side of the kidneys if you look here here this is the renal pelvis that is the beginning of u ureter so this is a renal pelvis if you look at the kidney cross section then this is the renal pelvis that's where the urine collects from the urinal pelvis starts the ureter and then ureter will carry it to the bl bladder bladder has got a muscular structure and it has got a nervous system control it's a voluntary control so we can control uh, the urge to we can control the passage of urine when we feel bladder pressure then we have a urge to pass the urine 
out through the urethra but that is voluntarily controlled okay now let us look at the final topic of this uh, video that is artificial kidney so here i have taken the patient scenario how does the patient uh, look when they uh, are undergoing hemodialysis procedure so patients blood is taken from their blood vessel the blood goes to the machine okay so look at these arrows the machine has a pump so these are the pumps and they pump they pump the blood to a system of tubules tubes and what are the tubes they have a semi permeable membrane then tubes are inserted they float in the tank of dialyzer and then once that dialysis process takes place the blood is again pumped back to the patient into the blood vessel so that's a basic structure now why do we need to do this so kidney is such an important organ kidneys perform the function of excreting the nitrogenous waste from the body and many conditions in many conditions the kidneys uh, get injured the injury can be because of the infection or it can be because of the trauma or because of the lack of blood flow to the kidneys maybe because of uh, heart failure dehydration or any other reason so this will reduce the kidney activity and it can lead to kidney failure complete failure of the kidney function so that will lead to accumulation of poisonous nitrogenous waste products in the body it can cause acidosis fluid overload electrolyte imbalance and rise in urea and uh, creatine in the body will lead to eventually lead to death of the patient so we have to help this patient with artificial kidney how does it work it works exactly on the same principle as the natural kidney so the blood artificial kidney has number of as i said it has a system of tubes that is suspended in a tank of dialyzing fluid so remember this sentence it is a system of tubes suspended in a tank of dialyzing fluid and what are the tubes the tubes are made up of semi permeable membrane lining okay now what happens is patient's blood is taken from patient uh, patient's blood vessel through a system of pump it is pushed through the tubes that have got a uh, semi permeable membrane and this semi permeable membrane allows diffusion between this blood and the dialyzing fluid that is there inside the tank so there is a diffusion of urea creatine excess electrolytes and other toxins that all they all diffuse into the dialyzing fluid and then that fluid is removed out of the tank through a system of motor and pump so that is how the system works so we have seen in in a hum, natural human kidney the fluid enters into the renal tubule via filtration and then there it is reabsorbed into the arteries and venules arterioles and venules here in artificial kidney the fluid uh, the blood doesn't go uh, doesn't uh, filter but it exchanges the nitrogenous waste products by diffusion and there is no reabsorption here okay it's only diffusion one way diffusion so uh, of the nitrogenous waste and toxic products and that is removed through this system of dialyzing fluid so this is about artificial kidney so artificial kidney replaces the need for natural kidney so nowadays uh, instead of if the peop, if the patient needs dialysis lifelong then they get renal transplant that is uh, the kidney of other human being is uh, taken out from that donor person and it is uh, implanted it is put in the body of the recipient that is the patient who needs it and then that kidney is used uh, as a normal kidney so it is called as renal transplant and 
uh, artificial uh, uh, filtration hemodialysis has got different types and they are used in day to day uh, practice in medical practice so uh, to to recap we have two kidneys and a system uh, from kidneys to the urethra that carries uh, urine and the urine has got uh, nephrons there are about 1 million nephrons in each kidney that is 10 lakh nephrons in each kidney nephrons have uh, malfigian body that has got bowman's capsule that has got uh, glomerulus there is a filtration of the blood 180 liter uh, of the volume is filtered but only couple of liters urine is produced so rest of it is reabsorbed okay and artificial kidney that is hemodialysis is used to replace the natural kidney in case if the kidneys both kidneys fail to function so i hope this is useful for you share this with your friends as well and i will post uh, such important topics for your year 10 cbsc uh, regularly. Take care. Bye-bye.